everybody here this evening. I do want to mention that the board held an executive session uh, prior to the meeting uh, to discuss personnel and legal matters. At this point, uh, board member comments. Do we have any board member comments? Uh, I'd like to say something. I went to curriculum night for my grandson Mason. He was uh, redistricted from Ross to Westview Elementary. I could not get over Westview. How nice it is. It, it's beautiful down there. And his teacher is for Mr. Goodworth. I can't tell you how great he was. And, you know, very welcoming. So I, I thought it was real nice the way they handled it, and, uh, you know, with the new ones coming in. And I really like the teacher and Mr. Simpson. You can't beat him. But the building is wonderful. You, you ought to take the time and get down and look. Mm -hmm. There's still a few little things, but nothing major. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I, I, I would just like to please. just add um, <coughs> the, uh, I, I think, uh, Dr. Taylor uh, oversaw a very efficient uh, process uh, in uh, the uh, the launch of our one-to-one -one initiative uh, in, in the uh, grades uh, six through eight. I have a sixth and an eighth six. grader. I'm sorry? Uh, I just did sixth. Okay. Did seven, I'm eight. sorry, Joanna. I'm, uh, my apologies. <laughs> and and uh, Dr. Van Atta as well for, for the middle school. So I have a sixth and eighth grader and uh, uh, the process for getting getting the, the iPads, getting them registered, and getting them in the students' hands, and they're already starting to, to, to use them in their coursework, and they're very, very enthusiastic about it. So I would like to con congratulate you for that. Thank you. Anybody else? I, and I want to uh, take this time to introduce this year's student representatives to the board and ask them to say a few words about themselves, uh, their activities, maybe athletic involvement, hobbies, et cetera. So, uh, who wants to go first, if you don't mind saying your name and what grade you're in and maybe a little bit about yourself, please feel free. Hi, I'm Madeline Cole. I'm in 11th grade and I go to Babies for early childhood education. And then I have a job, so <laughs> that's <laughs> all I do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madeline. And our new rep. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm in 12th grade. I play softball for the varsity team, and I also play for a travel team called Pittsburgh Pack Predators. And I'm the president of the Yearbook Club and our Mass Honor Society. Welcome to both of you. Welcome back, Madeline, and welcome to uh, Haley. We'll look forward to having you here every every meeting. Thank you. We can now move on to uh, superintendent's report. It says under education, I have an enrollment update. I just rolled it all into one. those two things here while I'm up here. Um, back to school, it's always an exciting time. Uh, and so it was an exciting year here for us. <laughs> It'll be the last one. All right. Is this keyboard on too? Can I control it from here? Nope. Hold on. Technical difficulties, much like the first of the year. idea all right new we had some new initiatives as we um, ended last school year began this school year uh, power school is a new student information system and I, I don't know if you were here with us in January when we talked about ProSoft and that ProSoft hasn't been supported as a student information system it was purchased by Harris Solutions several years ago so we were getting to the point where we had to make a change um, last year we spent uh, days treating this like uh, a new employee. We interviewed 12 companies at the beginning, um, divided into teams of teachers and counselors and administrators to make sure that we got the right product. There were some things that had to be absolute in this product, and one was that it had to have its own gradebook. Power School has its own gradebook. ProSoft doesn't. Our gradebook was a secondary gradebook, and we had issues with gradebooks and the student information system communicating back and forth, and so a lot of that was the impetus behind changing to Power School. Power School is the big player in the game. It's the most prominent student information system used in this country. We interviewed a number of, uh, of vendors and we settled on this was the best choice for our guidance counselors, for our teachers, the best grade book that it had, the most information for parents with the app. I hope that 
those of you that are in attendance with us are having some success with the app as, as we're beginning to navigate through the school year. But that's the reason behind the Power School um, student information system transition. We're not done yet. We are at the very early stages of our transition. The most important part of the transition was making sure our schedules were correct, students were in the right places, which then populates grade books. Um, parent information is correct in there, and then we're going to begin to disseminate more information out through transportation and different fields that are available to us that are not in use um, right now. But so far, PowerSchool has been uh, pretty successful on our side of the table. I know Don Clark and technology has done a tremendous job helping us to get to where we are uh, with PowerSchool. But that was a major, major transition for this district. And um, so far, it's been a really successful transition. <coughs> we transitioned to ABC Transit this year. Our contract with first student expired. Um, ABC Transit is not a new transportation company. We are not their only provider. They do have other school districts in the area. The things that are new is their buses. They are brand new. The first day they had 800 miles on them because they traveled 800 miles after they were built. So um, it was a rocky start. The first part of the school year, unfortunately, sometimes is with transportation, but there are some things that I will get to a little bit later that kind of creates the perfect storm. Power School is one of them. Um, the way Power School works and the, the, the transition of new students into the system and when they got into our Versatrans system. And so we had a perfect storm of some things that happened with transportation. Hopefully, we're ironing those things out. The bus stops are getting a little bit clearer. The routes are getting a little bit shorter. Um, more manageable expectations are, are kind of occurring as we're massaging through that. And I'm going to show you some of the other things that we've done a little bit later. But it takes a little bit of time with transportation because you're dealing with human movement. And you're dealing with other vehicles on the, on the roads and traffic patterns and different things that mess up our commutes to and from work every day also. So we're working through some of those things, but we had to transition to a new transportation provider. And with that comes hiccups, trips, and stumbles along the way. Um, Project Connect, Mr. Yeomans made comment about our iPad distribution. We distribute about 900 iPads to students in grades 6, 7, and 8. Um, very successful as we move into Project Connect and all of the great things that we're looking to do by providing that device in the hands of our children. Um, our teachers have had those devices for several years. And as I said to them on opening day about our expectations, it's a tool for learning. That's what it is. This is not a screen to put your children in front of to be educated. We still have fantastic world-class teachers working with your kids every single day, and they're teaching them. We provided them with a tool, and that's it. Um, it's a very powerful tool. It's a very expensive tool, but it's a tool for teaching and learning, and it, it cannot and will not replace the fantastic teachers we have interfacing with your children every day. We have a new English language arts cl curriculum for all of our elementary schools. I'm just going to snap on that really quick. Jeff uh, Taylor will do a full presentation on what that new ELA curriculum is and looks like as we move forward into different um, uh, committee meetings in the future. But we have a new English language arts curriculum. Again, when you make changes like that, when we made changes to the math curriculum several years ago, it's hard to get it off the ground. I have heard nothing but positive comments from the teachers that I've talked to if I specifically ask them about this. Um, so I'm hopeful that this is off in the, in the right start. Um, Westview Improvements, Mrs. Reed said that as well. It's beautiful, it's bright, it's colorful. Uh, tomorrow, the playground is being unveiled, the new playground that's in front of the library area. Um, I'm really, really happy with the way that that area came about as we transitioned to an area that was difficult to manage with the grass and basically the mud that was occurring there into an asphalt play surface that um, our kids can utilize at recess and then the PTA group worked really hard to get that playground in there for the kids as well. So uh, the grand opening of the playground is tomorrow at Westview, but the building, again, really nice, really good, um, really much needed improvements to that facility. Uh, we have a new online facilities request system. Getting out of the paper business, uh, you can now do your facilities requests online rather than filling out the paperwork, and it's, it makes this much much more efficient for us to track and manage who's utilizing our facilities and what those people who are utilizing our facilities need. And we went live with the redistricting ideas that we had and we had gone over here in March. So a lot of new things are happening. A lot of great things are happening. Um, unfortunately, there are some stumbles in, along the way and we know that and we're working very hard to, to correct those things. But this is what we started off with for the new school year and that's a lot to ask for in a, in a school district to make that many changes in one summer. Summer is not as long as at least it felt whenever I was a kid. Maybe I'm just getting old.
but it was a quick summer and we had a lot that we had to get accomplished to get day one off the ground. Uh, I want to give a redistricting update. Really, this is just our current elementary enrollment and classroom usage. I'm going to use the same charts and colors that I used when we did redistricting so that we can take a look at um, how are we day one after, and I, I even said all along, I don't know what kindergarten is. Kindergarten is an assumption number. Um, once I know what kindergarten is, I can tell you how long we can sustain this into the future. That was a lot of the things that I said in our redistricting meetings. Well, surprise, kindergarten has 120 students at McIntyre, a number that I've been superintendent now for six years. I was the assistant for two before that and have never seen a number like that in one school. So, big kindergarten. Kindergarten is our largest class, K-11. The 12th grade class is a little bit larger than they are, but kindergarten is our biggest class. So when you look at the demographic study of Dr. Stuman, he said we're growing. And he said we're growing in the Ross and McIntyre area, that they are going to be bigger than High Cliff and Westview, and that's what we got. Um, so that's our kindergarten and first grade numbers. You can take a look, as I've always done. This is how many sections we're operating with how many seats are available within those sections, what our class size is, all the way along the entire chart. So first grade, again, we, we knew those numbers. Those were our kindergarten students as we uh, transitioned them to first grade. Uh, these are day three enrollment numbers. I, I believe kids have enrolled in the last two days, uh, three, four days. since. Day, so these are day three numbers, um, which will be the number that we, by law, are required to publish to the state of Pennsylvania. So. Uh, whenever I built this, it was after our third day enrollment. So some of these are probably higher because I know that we still have students that are enrolling in the district. And I'm going to get to a slide about new enrollments here a little bit later. Um, second and third grade, you can see there again, the sections we're running, the seats that are available to us. Second grade um, has been one that was on our radar before. We had yellow in those places before that if you remember when I was doing the redistricting information, those were caution. Caution, these are grades that we're looking at that could go to the next grade level. Um, so those numbers are still in that area. Um, two and three seats at Ross and McIntyre is obviously not a whole lot of room um, in those two grade levels. Third grade's pretty solid for us, four in each of the classes, and you can see the seats that are available to us, giving us class sizes between really 23 uh, or 24 and 22. Fourth and fifth grade, again, you have a big number at Highcliffe in fourth grade. There's 100 there. Um, but you can see, again, the seats that we have available to us in those grade bands in, in 4 and 5, and then grade 6. Um, again, we have seats available within the footprint. All right, what's all that look like whenever I put it all together? That one. We have 28 classrooms that are built at High Cliff. That's this column. 28 classrooms at High Cliff, 28 classrooms at McIntyre, 31 at Ross. 28 at Westview. If you remember, we had 27 at Westview. We moved the computer lab to a space that was not utilized as a classroom. If any of you have not seen it, I'm really happy with it. it it's really nice the way they designed that space. Took a computer lab, turned it into a classroom for us. So that's how we gained a classroom. We took a space that was not utilized as a classroom and turned it into our computer lab. So we have 28 classrooms at those three buildings, 31 at Ross, and we are operating at 26, 27, 29, 26 after the redistricting. Um, this is also obviously including where our students currently are, so any of the students that took an out-of-attendance area exception are in that school. And that's not just Ross and McIntyre because we have out-of-attendance area exceptions in, in the other buildings as well. So right now, again, we have seven opening, open classrooms in the district. This is uh, the way they're built is with 115. The numbers I went over for you, we're operating at 108 sections. We were at 105 sections last year, so we are a growing district. It's obvious by the just looking at our kindergarten numbers where we are. So that's where we are as far as capacity is concerned. Um, I just, for my own sake and hopefully for yours as well, I wanted to know what would have happened had we done nothing with redistricting. And I continue to say we cannot do nothing. We have to do something. And we went through a number of different options uh, whether it was permanent structures, temporary structures, raised class sizes. But I just, without getting into all of the things that we had talked about and all the multiple options, I wanted to know, had we done nothing and not redistricted, what does it look like? And this is what it looks like. Welcome to 129 students at McIntyre, um, which, again, we know that. That's, that's, our, that's our growth area. It's why we felt that the need to move, to, to have to redistrict. So you would have had... Six and five kindergartens, Ross would have gained a kindergarten at 101. And as we go through the board, 
I'm not going to go through every one. I think it's probably best just go to the end. And this is what it would have looked like had we done nothing. The problem is, is we would have had to operate 29 classrooms at McIntyre, and we have 28. So we're negative one. And we are 32 classrooms at Ross, 31 built. We're negative one there as well. Um, so the need the redistricting plan was here. We had to do it. Um, so that's the result of what would have been had we done nothing. And again, we didn't know what was coming into kindergarten. And that's the number that really throws the, the chart off is the number of students that we had coming into kindergarten. 129 students in the former <coughs> McIntyre area is just a gigantic number. Okay, so that's the redistricting in a nutshell there. Um, go ahead. Yeah, this is just something that was a phenomenon this summer that I wanted to kind of highlight because a lot of new enrollments happened. Go back. That's all right. That, that supports it, yeah. A lot of new enrollments happened in August and in the last couple of days of the summer. But third day enrollment, we're up 82 students from where we were on the last day of school. It's even more if we go third day enrollment last year to third day enrollment this year. It's an even bigger number. It's like maybe 95 or something. So we had 13 or so students move in throughout the school year and then um, 82. That's going to happen again with the size of our kindergarten. Okay, so I'm going to break that down for us too. Last year we used 106 classrooms at the elementary level. We have 108 now. Last year the class size was about 21.7. Again, this is across the board, seven, seven grades, K6, <clears throat> 21.8. So our class size as a whole overall for the elementaries didn't really change all that much. But the changes occurred within the buildings as we move students around. So Highcliffe has 64 more students this year than it did last year. McIntyre has 20 more students, and we moved students out of McIntyre. Ross has 49 less students, and we, we know we moved a significant number out of Ross. Westview we moved a significant number into, and they're only up 27. And then you have <laughs> our middle school is growing as that small group is moving now to the high school because that current ninth grade class is one of our smaller ones, followed by the current eighth grade class. So that plus 59 <laughs> is some students that moved in, plus our sixth grade class is, is larger than, our, our current seventh grade class is larger than our current ninth grade class. So that's why that number goes up, and it's why the high school number goes down, because your ninth grade class is smaller than your twelfth grade class that exited last year. So that's what the district looks like <coughs> as you break down the district statistics. And this is the one that really shocked me as I moved the chart. Um, you can see I lined up first grade, last day of school, to first, to, this is kindergarten, last day of school. That's why I moved them up and there's a blank here. So this is this same class over the summer. This is the number of students we had moved in or out of the district. Ten second graders moved into the district this summer. So not only are we growing, but our turnover in houses are producing children at the school age, and we have a significant number of housing turnover. The 26th and 9th grade is not a shocking number. Um, that's a number that's normally in that area, and those are uh, families that at K-8 private parochial schools that choose to come to the high school. That number is historically around that area. And <clears throat> same thing with the 12 in the senior class. Um, students who have an IEP, are permitted to be educated until the age of 21. So they are in the senior class um, based upon their IEP. So that, that's not, we had 12 seniors move in. We have um, children that have chosen to remain in our educational system until they're 21 by their right. And that's how that number ends up with what it is. So we didn't have 12 seniors move in. Um, but we had significant movement into the district, um, 65 new students. And having a new student information system, which our secretaries had to enter these students, it became cumbersome that then added to the Versatrans issue in transportation as well as everything kind of spirals around in this. So with transportation, we have a new provider. We had internal staffing changes. Um, Gloria chose to retire this summer, and she was our transportation clerk for a long, long time. Knows the ins and outs of the streets in the community. And... Um, wasn't planning to be with us at the beginning of the year. She graciously agreed to stay on for us to help us through this. But 
We started this with internal staffing changes. We started this with a new student information system, and I've already said we had a number of families that enrolled at the last, very last minute. So that kind of compounded some of the issues that we had. Um, so to help smooth these things out, what have I been doing? What have we been doing? Um, I met with ABC Transit today. I met with the president, Dave Hall, and I, um, with the president and their general manager to discuss our expectations and our concerns over transportation. Our expectations haven't changed. A, number one, health, safety, and well-being of our kids. <clears throat> Get them to and from school safely, number one. So um, we went over those things. What we've been doing is revising our routes. That's not new, and that's not because we have a new transportation company. That's common practice as the beginning of the year happens. Unfortunately, I feel like it's a higher volume, or maybe I was a little closer to it this year than I was in the past. But we revised a lot of routes. We looked at a lot of different end times and start times of buses and moved, well, this bus is available to us at this time. Let's send it to this school in this direction and do a lot of those types of massaging so that we don't have students on a bus for an extended period of time or a period of time that we believe to be excessive. Uh, we established new bus stops. We reassigned bus stops to different buses as we saw, well, this bus has too many students on it. Move them to another bus that's in a sort of a similar area that we could get them to that location in a timely fashion as well. We set forth new dismissal procedures here because we were finding that the buses leaving the middle school were arriving at High Cliff 15 and 18 minutes apart from each other. But the reality of it was is they were trapped in traffic here. So we reorganized how they line up here for the middle school run. And the first 11 buses off this campus now are going to High Cliff. We talked to Westview Borough and they allowed us to um, direct traffic at the bottom of the hill as well. So we can stop the traffic coming up and down Rochester Road so that all of our buses can leave the campus so that they can get our middle school students to where they need to be. Those were all the things that were happening day one that we didn't have in place. We didn't have somebody at the bottom of the hill directing traffic for us and find our buses just stuck in Rochester Road traffic. Then they get stuck at the red light at the top of the hill, stuck at the red light by the 7-Eleven, and it just continued to compound itself. Then, the later you were in the line of buses, the longer it took for you to get off this campus. So we reorganized that, and we're finding much more success of our buses arriving to High Cliff within about three minutes of each other. It's really a one red light is what they're being hung up. And I know Mrs. Bilderback does a fantastic job of getting the, the students on the bus and dismissed from High Cliff in a timely fashion so that they can get moving. So those are some of the things that we've done. I already talked about Gloria agreeing to unretire for us and come in and help us out. So. That's really what we've been doing to resolve some of the issues that we were facing. So that's the superintendent's report and the enrollment report and the education part of the agenda all rolled into one. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Can I raise a question? <clears throat> Do you have a breakdown on the schools as to how many exceptions were taken? Um, I we do. We can look for that for I, next year. I do, but I don't have it with me. Uh -huh. um, I can give it to you at the next meeting, absolutely. Oh, that's I fine. have it on the back side. That wasn't a spreadsheet. That was a PowerPoint. But uh -huh. that information is attached to one of the slides on the spreadsheet that I used to build that. I, I can't give it to you off the top of my head, but I can absolutely give it to you at the next meeting. Okay, I'd appreciate that. And sure. also, um, <clears throat> the last couple of weeks I've been talking, some secretaries have called me, and they have a concern about students that are in our district that shouldn't be. And uh, would you be able to just put a letter out to the secretaries asking who they are, that we can look into it? Yeah, uh, they're we'll telling reiterate me that we expectation. probably have at least 30. Now, and our rooms are getting big and things are getting tight. I think we need to really come down on that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm certain they understand our expectation if they, anybody believes that there's a student fraudulently right. enrolled Please notify us. We have social workers to investigate that, and if they do not lay their head on a pillow in Ross and Westview, they are not by rights to be educated by us, and right. we will remove them from the district. That's fraudulent residency, uh, and that's not something that we take lightly, and I know you know that, so that's for everybody. If you, if you know somebody that does not lay their head in Ross and Westview, but they are in our schools, uh, please let us know. Yep. All right, thank you, Dr. Manorino. Uh, this is the point at the meeting that we now uh, will entertain public comments first on the agenda items. Is there anybody that signed up to speak on the agenda items? Okay, is there 
There being none, there, I know there's some folks that signed up to speak afterwards. We'll, we'll entertain the, the uh, uh, speakers now if you care to get up and talk uh, at, at the podium. And before we do that, I'm going to have Mr. Uh, Nudy read our, uh, uh, our uh, statement for uh, speaking uh, to the board. And uh, once he does that, if you would be kind enough, those of you who will speak, state your name and address for the record. And uh, we would ask that you would hopefully hold your comments to maybe three minutes, and then we can go from there. But let Mr. Nudie read this, and then we, you, could, you could speak, ma'am. Hold on a sec. Go ahead. We would like to invite any resident, taxpayer, or employee of the North Hill School District who wishes to address the board to come forward at this time. It is our policy to strongly <coughs> encourage such participation in as much as it provides the board with an important source of ideas as well as informs us of many concerns in the district. The board does reserve the right, however, to limit the amount of time allotted to public discussion and of any particular speaker or speakers and or issues in the interest of preserving an orderly and effective public meeting. Personnel items must be submitted in writing to the board president in cons for consideration five days prior to the board meeting. Items dealing with Title I <coughs> and Title VI can be addressed. Some of your concerns can be immediately and quickly addressed following your comments. While others may require some research and discussion. <laughs> when appropriate, you are welcome to further discuss your con concerns with us following the meeting. We appreciate your interest. Thank you. If you would mind Hi. state your name and address for the record, Thank you, please. yes. Um, my name is Allison <coughs> Mathis, and my address is 414 Gardner Place in Ross Township. I'm the president of the PTO at Ross Elementary. Um, and I just wanted to talk about the second grade class size at Ross Elementary. Um, I was really disappointed because my daughter is in a class with 25 students this year, and we were told that um, part of the reason that the redistricting was occurring was to keep class sizes small. And I just saw in Dr. Manorino's slideshow that had the redistricting not occurred, she would have been in a class with 21 students. Um, I believe her class size last year was 19 or 20 students. And I am concerned and confused as to why second grade was not split into five sections and why it's been kept at four sections. Any thoughts on that? It's under the class size threshold that we use for the district and K and one is 23 and two and three is 25. And so that is four sections is less than 100. That's the 98 that they have. So that's the reasoning behind it. But why was it four? I, I don't understand why it went from four sections to five sections, and then third grade is, third grade has smaller class sizes. Like the sec, the class size at second grade is, is pretty significant, and I know the second grade teachers at the school are very concerned about it as well. It's um, number of students in the class, so it's uh, the threshold for second grade is twenty five. So if there were one hundred and one, absolutely it would be that fifth section and then you would see the class size per grade or per classroom drop significantly because you're dividing it now by five but because it's not a 100 it's um there's still spaces available under the class size policy that the district has well, we were told that the um if there were three more students to enroll that those students would be going to mcintyre is that true that's so true there's no chance of the class sizes becoming smaller Anything else, Allison? Okay. No. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address the board? Hi. My name is Elizabeth Pagel Hogan. My address is 141 Tyler Road. Um, I have an incoming second grader next year, and I'm wondering if he's also going to be in a class with 24 students and if we're going to be facing this issue for an uh, ongoing time and if we're going to be dealing with redistricting again in one or two years? Uh, well, there's two things. We're operating, I mean, the class policy size has always been where it is. So in some cases, the class sizes have been a little smaller. It just happened to be that way based on the number of enrollments. But we're still operating within the class size policy. and. The second, your second question with regards to, uh, we will be uh, probably assembling a committee here shortly to just look at st student enrollment going forward so that 
we're hopefully planning two, three years in advance if there's any need to do any redistricting. We don't see that at this point, but to try to stay on top of the situation, we're probably going to gather some folks here from this board to start looking at those at, at the structure of the schools and what we're holding so that it maybe we're three years out in front of the problem or two years out in front of the problem instead of a year and a half or something along those lines. So we are going to be looking. I think based on the size, class size we have and the room that we have in each school, we need to do that on an ongoing basis, even if there's no redistricting that is necessary, but just constantly trying to stay in front of potentially larger enrollments. And as Dr. Manorino said, uh, it's, you know, kindergarten is always a problem for us. So it's not, a, I mean, just trying to determine the class the, 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 with the numbers that, that, the, that we get enrolled, especially when people start enrolling late, which, which is fine, but it does create a little havoc. So if we need more kindergarten classrooms, obviously, the rest of the classroom sort of get impacted. So we do want to make sure that, that we're sort of out ahead of this. And we are, as I said, we are going to be assembling a committee specifically to look at student enrollment going forward. And if any redistricting is necessary, or it appears that that's the case, we'll know that well in advance. OK, I have some other questions. Sure. What methods were used to determine how many students and families have Wi-Fi at home for Project Connect? We did a survey last year, well, actually for the last several years. Um, I believe it was 98% overall. It, was district. the survey sent to parents? Yes. I have a sixth grader. I don't remember receiving that survey. Um, I do uh, know that a lot of kids showed up um, in my son's uh, school who didn't have all the apps downloaded. And um, there was some question as to what they could do if they didn't have Wi-Fi at home and they were suggested to go to McDonald's or Starbucks, which I wasn't actually sure if that was the best learning environment for a sixth grader who's you know, trying to stay on top of their schoolwork. Well, our, our first suggestion would be go to the libraries because they have Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh, third question that I have, um, the busing. So, um, I think there were some popsicles handed out at some point in our school, um, but it was not clear to all the kids why the popsicles were handed out. And I also think that the students haven't actually received an adequate uh, explanation as to why they were left waiting at certain schools for up to an hour. Um, also, it, it's been a little bit difficult for parents to understand why this has taken so long to be resolved. I totally get first day of school lots of problems with traffic, that's a big deal. But I think a lot of parents have felt that we haven't received communication that the school district is really um, making sure that these problems aren't going to keep happening. Um, I can only speak to my own experience. We've had two different bus drivers bringing my children home. It's the, um, I think, seventh day of school, maybe eighth day of school mm -hmm. now, ninth. And um, we finally got the kids home on time. And I'm just wondering, why weren't their trial routes done beforehand to figure this stuff out? And, and why did we get a postcard over the weekend and we got information that our bus was changing on Thursday at curriculum night and our bus driver, who was supposed to bring the kids home on Monday, told us that he had no idea he was supposed to come back to the school to get our children. So how come we got that information and the driver didn't? And how come you know, our principal is having to bear the brunt of this and not the people who made the decision to hire this bus company? And how come the bus company isn't you know, bearing the brunt of this? Yeah, I can assure you that we have and we have, are having ongoing discussions with the bus company about the issues that occurred. Uh, we believe that what has occurred and the problems that have occurred have been addressed and we're still with on, in ongoing discussions with the bus company to make sure that they understand just exactly what we expect of them. And they, uh, they know that, but some things yeah. happened uh, with respect to uh, some of the buses being delayed. Uh, uh, I just know of one instance where the Catholic schools didn't let out their children fast enough, or at least on time, and so everybody else, everybody else it was kind of a domino effect. Everybody else got held up and some routes were just, uh, but that's been remedied. Uh, and so what we are, we are, as I said, uh, we're in ongoing and continuing discussions with the bus company to make sure. And I'd like to, s I'd like to think, I believe that most of these issues are now behind. 
So all the drivers are gonna know that they have to come to schools. Uh, yeah, uh, they should. They need to know their assignments, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Because that happened twice okay. with two different drivers right, right. from the same bus yeah, company but we think, we think on the that, same route. We think that has been resolved, we believe. I mean, we've been told that. So. Okay, so as parents, what recourse do we have if it's not resolved? What recourse? Mm -hmm. uh, we just like to know if there are problems out there, please inform the, the administration immediately so we can address them as quickly as possible. And, and we will, because it's obviously a serious issue if there's delays in busing, especially longer than five or 10 minutes. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank I, you. I have another question about the ordinance, but I think I'll give somebody else a chance to ask that one, <laughs> so. Yeah, while, you, you, while you have the podium, not. Anybody else wanna ask about the ordinance? The, uh, do you wanna do it? <laughs> So how come this ordinance was passed over the summer and Ross parents are just finding out about it now? What, I'm sorry, can you refer to what ordinance? I don't have the number in front of me, no, um, okay, but, what but the one that um, we've been told we will be ticketed if we are either waiting in line to pick up our kids mm -hmm. or parking. And it's not clear which one because people have shared language that indicates either one of those activities that will lead to parents being I ticketed. Uh, that is a, that's a township ordinance and that's not under our jurisdiction at all. Mm -hmm. So what, what you have there, the way I, I understand it is there have been complaints from the neighbors where people are parking their cars in front of the house and actually I guess it's Park Place, where people are parking on Park Place in a driving lane that are just parked there. And it does create a dangerous situation because people coming up Twin, a Twin Oaks are flying up that hill, so to speak, and someone pulls up because they don't know, they're not there to pick up a student, they're just trying to get down Twin Oaks. So it gets so pretty dangerous. I understand but, but the, the problem. But the point is it, is, it is a township, the township is responsible for what you see there in the ordinance. We. The district has no jurisdiction over that. Right, but my question was, okay. how come Ross parents weren't informed of this if this was an issue that was passed by the township and it impacts parents who have children in the North Hills School District? It seems to me like it would benefit the school district to inform parents of this in a timely manner so that we could make modifications to our drop-off and pick-up procedures. Unfortunately, we were told about this the day before the ordinance was set to go into action. Right. And I feel like there was a real lack of communication between the township, the school district, the parents, who are also taxpayers in the township. Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, I mean, if you, we didn't have anything to do with the ordinance. Again, it's a township thing. Uh, and uh, that being said, I guess there is some consideration of just maybe common sense that people shouldn't be parking in front of people's driveways, leaving their car and, lo leaving their car and walking to the school and blocking someone's driveway. I, I don't know if we need to communicate that to people. Maybe we do, that you shouldn't block a driveway and leave your car, for one, or park in a driving lane where cars need to get by for just a common traffic flow. But uh, I think we, communica we communicated that fairly quickly the moment, I don't know Amanda, if you. We weren't informed of it yesterday. Okay, so that's, I forgot. We were officially informed yesterday, so if, if that's, we were informed yesterday and we informed the parents yesterday. So the, so moment the township we, didn't inform the school district right, of this ordinance. Right. Does that make you angry? A lot of things the township does make me angry, okay? <laughs> so that's just one of them. So but are you advocating on behalf of the parents to have some kind of extension or, or modification well, to this? Uh, that's up to the township. We, again, we, we, we can't... So I was asking if the school board is right. doing something for the parents. The, uh, no. Not, and the only reason, because it's a traffic issue and it's an ordinance issue, and so we don't have it. We can't tell the township not to ticket people because they're illegally parked. Absolutely, okay. but there is some concern that parents who are waiting in line not leaving their cars are going to be ticketed, and I would love if my school district advocated on behalf of me as a parent with the township to make sure that drop off and pick up procedures mm -hmm. proceeded smoothly while respecting people's private property. Correct. I would love for the, the school district to be an here? advocate for this. Yeah, sure. uh, can, can we, we, we as, as was stated, sometimes we have some issues with the township, but we, we all serve the same master and that's, that's the, the, the same taxpayers that, that pay the taxes to, to both the, the township and the school district. And we do have a good relationship with them as far as policing our, 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 our schools and our events uh, when, when incidents happen. Is, is it possible just to reach out to the chief and, 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 and get a clarification on, on, on how they're 
how they intend to enforce this ordinance? There's no, there's no question, but just so we're clear, these are residents that are complaining sure. that there are people parked in front of their house blocking their driveways. I, I don't know how to advocate that that's okay. Yeah. That's but all she's I'm talking saying. about people that aren't par blocking well, driveways well, that are but not, not haven't left their car who are in no, their car. No, I agree, Mike, but it's still they're parked illegally. Uh, they're blocking. Okay. Uh, that's all I'm saying is I, I, I understand what you're saying. I just don't know how we advocate for that. That that I mean, I'm, we can I'm just try to try to give the parents an understanding of how the ordinance is, it, precisely how they intend to enforce the ordinance. Yes. So we can communicate that. No, I mean, there's signs up there now. You probably saw those. The signs are there, right. but there is language out there in the ordinance that says right. parents waiting in line will be ticketed. Also, I think the school district has um, a very important job to stand up to the township and say, you can't pass these things that impact a huge population of people without giving us proper notice Elizabeth, to deal I, with I, this. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but but we're, we're being asked to advocate something that's Basically, Ill, you just can't park on the street. I mean, that's that's not what I'm asking for. I, I understand, but you, but it's the same thing. You can't park your car on McKnight Road and leave it, or even sit in it. Something. I going would to never happen. do that. But, but so you have neighbors up there who are concerned about having cars parked that has been going on for some time. And I think what's ha I think what's happened. You have a lot of people coming up there, half hour, even 40 minutes before school <coughs> is letting out, parking their cars. That's what I, I think appears to be happening. I'm not there, but that's what I'm being told, that the people are coming up well in advance of school being let, and by the time it's done, the cars are They're all, run. all over the place, and, and it kind of... Absolutely. So I don't but know how long you advocate to not to allow that to happen. I, I don't believe the township seemed to have given you a chance at all to talk with parents about this, well, and, and I understand that it's wrong to park in front of people's driveways. So, Got it. Uh, just go ahead. But I think the township made a huge mistake, and I think the school district needs to call them out on that okay. and, so and say, you need to give our families more time to adjust to this. How much time? Well, I, do, I think more than two days. I think more than two days. We got the call last night saying it was going to, into effect today, right. and our principal basically had two days to put a plan in place. Two days. I would suggest... When, <coughs> with the commissioners, they really don't care too much what we say. They need the constituents. You need to call Steve Corbel. He's your rep from over there. He is there. not. Isn't He's he not. your boss? No, that's Dan DeMarco's ward. Oh, Dan, we'll call Dan DeMarco and ask him and invite him to <coughs> your PTO meeting to come and speak and address this issue and then you can raise the questions to them. I, I will happily call them. It, oh, it bothers me that this school district doesn't seem to want to advocate for us the same way we were told to call the bus company. Call the bus company when you have problems. Call your representative when you have problems. But I'm a parent with children in school. You're my school board. I'm well, coming to I you with these problems. I would call them for you, but I can guarantee you they probably wouldn't even call me back. So then why do I think they're going to call me back? Well, because you vote for them. They you also vote for them, don't you? No, no. It's done by district. Uh, we have a really good relationship with the Ross Township Police and the Westview Borough Police, and I'll reach out to Officer them. or yeah. Chief Lay. It's not Officer anymore. Chief Lay tomorrow. I'll, we'll make a communication. Um, we'll go over to Ross in in Mary's office and make a call, and then. Um, Allie, would it be easy, I don't mean to call you out, but as the president of the PTO, if we just get the information to you and you could disseminate it to parents or, or Mrs. Grimm or something like that, but we'll, we'll make a call tomorrow to Chief Lay and talk to him about it. And the, I think the idea here is it's not our ordinance and it's not our law and it's not our rule, um, but we can talk to the chief about how he plans to enforce the rule. But if he tells me he's ticketing cars tomorrow, I don't have a whole lot to say to him. Because that's their rule, and it's their oppor opportunity or their ability to enforce or not to enforce. So I have n absolutely easily call him tomorrow morning, and uh, that's, I guess, probably the best we could probably do yeah. in this situation. I, I do appreciate that. It's super frustrating. It's super frustrating that the board, frankly, doesn't feel like it can have more of an impact in managing the experience of parents in the school district and, and helping us feel like you're representing our best interests. Um, however, I do, I do 
know the importance of calling my representatives, and I definitely do it a lot um, for a number of issues. So thanks so much for hearing my concerns, um, and I look forward to hearing uh, what uh, the police chief says. Thanks. Is there anybody else? That okay, thank you. Okay, we can now move on to education. It looks like we already did number one, Mrs. Bender, so you have one other item, I believe. Yes, there's the elementary curriculum night attendance. Uh, Dr. Taylor, would you like to address that? Our elementary curriculum nights um, at all four of our buildings were very well attended. I was at each of the four buildings that night, and the parents were very excited and uh, very happy to meet their classroom teachers and, and see the buildings, and it went really well. That's it. That's it. There are Thank no you. items under education to be added to okay. the legislative meeting. Uh, Mr. Mihal, it doesn't appear we have anything under athletics and activities unless you want to add anything on your own? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave you with Beatty also. Anything to add on Beatty at this point? No. Nothing? Okay. Let's go on to uh, personnel, and that would be Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Wogus. Uh, the personnel committee meets in executive session, and we discussed resignations, appointments, change of status, leave of absence, and job descriptions, as well as the PA educator contract. And therefore, I move that items one through six under personnel be added to the legislative meeting agenda for approval. Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, policy, Mrs. Reed, is there anything that? No, there? nothing under thank policy. Thank you. Uh, it looks like Mr. Yeomans has a few things under community intergovernmental relations. Mine's, mine's mm -hmm. dead. So I'm borrowing Kathy's. Uh, okay. Because unlike my children, <laughs> remember their iPads. I came straight to work and didn't get didn't, bring work, it. didn't get a chance to bring up, go home to get mine. Uh, so we have uh, our first item is our PSBA slate of candidates um, uh, for the uh, uh, annual meeting that's going to be held in Hershey in October, uh, and uh, so I will. Uh, entertain a motion to add community inter intergovernmental relations item number one to the agenda for approval. Second. Thank you, Dr. Nolish. We can move on to finance and that would be Dr. Nolish. Okay, thank you. We have five items tonight to add to the agenda. First is the general fund bills, <coughs> second are capital project fund bills, <coughs> third are budget transfers, fourth is payroll for the month of August 2016, and fifth is a bid award for copy paper dual purpose and it was uh, uh, being recommended that it be awarded to the road bidder. So I'd like to make a motion to add the finance items one through five to the legislative meeting agenda for approval. Second. Thank you. Support services, Mrs. Spade, do we have anything that you want to talk about? Um, there's no items under support service, but I would like to take a minute just to thank the custodial and maintenance staff for all their hard work this summer mm. and also the secretaries. Um, without these guys, we'd never have our first day of school, so I'd like to say thank <laughs> you. You did a great job. Good point. Thank you. Uh, any, uh, are there any other additional public comments that someone may have thought of that want to address the board? There being none, <laughs> I wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, my name is Molly Geiger, and I live at 131 Westview Avenue. Um, my daughters were redistricted this year to Highcliff, and um, I'm happy to say they, they love it. They're doing really, really well. But my concern is um, it appears that their bus that was already a crowded bus is now picking the kids up in our neighborhood. There's about 18 kids. And they go on to 279. They get off the Bellevue, Westview, or the Bellevue exit. They're sitting three to four at a seat. I mean, my fourth grader has a kindergarten sitting on her seat. They're getting onto a highway, and I believe it's in violation of the Pennsylvania Vehicle Code that there's that many kids. So I'm just trying to figure out what they're going to do about the overcrowdedness of the buses. <laughs> Molly, I just got a question. Are you suggesting that every seat is taken on the bus? Yes. Or is it maybe that one student is seating in one seat? Well, from my understanding, okay. I mean, I don't get on the bus with them, okay. but from my understanding that most of the seats are three okay. and some are four. Molly, can I have your bus number so I can get on it? Yeah, well, night? they ride 344 in the morning and 346 in the afternoon. 
which was changed also this week without them knowing about it. Okay. And I'm just concerned because they do get on the highway. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for okay. sure, we agree. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes, ma'am. My name is Christy Cannon. I live at 112 Fifth Avenue. My question is, if you talked to the transportation company today, please explain to me why, one, the bus can't be on time whatsoever, and it's been nine days. Two, what was exactly addressed? Because the bus company, whenever we did call the bus company, like our school told us to call the bus company, we were redirected to a different number which no, no voicemail whatsoever, and it went straight to voicemail. And then we were routed to a different number. And we told them that there was nothing that they can do about it because they had no information about the buses. How does the bus company not know where their buses are on a daily basis? And please explain to me why all of a sudden St. Sebastian is such a big deal. I don't know that it's a big deal, but they didn't let their students out when they normally did, but so that just kind of causes a delay. So I, I don't call it a big deal, but it does have, happen to have a domino effect on the delays. My daughter was a half hour to an hour late. At the end of the day, I'm responsible for two kids. I'm re leaving work early to pick up my daughter at the bus stop on a daily basis. Is that today they were two hours? How, how late was it? An hour to a, ha a half hour to an hour late. Today? Yesterday, I almost missed the bus because it came here, and it was literally 10 minutes early. Okay. I was specifically told what time my daughter will be home. But on the bus card, it says approximately 4.14. Okay. That approximately does not work with me because I do leave work, and I do fight traffic as well to get here to make sure that my daughter is picked up from the bus stop. You had problems even today? Yes. Okay. The bus does not know when to come. This morning it was 10 minutes early. Okay. It does not know that the right time, the time that is scheduled on our cards, which we have been given, and we have never had any problems. In the past three years that my daughter has been going to Ross, we have never had not one single issue. We were actually gracious enough to get the bus stop right up here. I, I just don't understand. I, must, I missed the bus number. Can you give me that? 353 three. in the morning, and then it's 363, three, although they haven't been on 363 three in the afternoon. It's actually 356. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. How do these kids know what bus to get on? They know. Huh? Thank you. We'll, 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 uh, as I said, we are in discussions. We'll just add that to the list and make sure it be. But the discussions, how are we supposed to fix our problems? I mean, like I said, I leave work early. I'm responsible for two kids. Like, how are we supposed to know what time to be at the bus stop? Do I have to leave work at 3.30 to make sure that my daughter is off the bus? Like, seriously, that's insane. Are you going to pay my daily wages for the time that I'm missing work? Like, it's ridiculous. And I even brought that up. I told them. I told ABC, I understand first day. Get it. Wholeheartedly. I, under, I will give you second day. Straight up. But this is over a week. You get, they need to pick a time, and they need to be reliable and dependable. And right now, that bus system is not reliable or dependable. Okay, okay we have your information, and we're, we're going to be on that starting tomorrow. Anybody else? Do I have to state my name again? No, it's fine. Okay. Um, first of all, my kids are on bus 366, and there have not been any issues on that bus. Um, so I'm, I just want to advocate on behalf of other people that have had bus issues. Um, it's my understanding that their kids are being marked tardy to school because of the bus issues. I don't, I don't and I just true. wanted to ask about no. that and find we out if that that's was not true. true. That's true. We do I don't not. know who's not telling true. you that, but that's not true. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I need a mo yes, ma'am. My name's Jane Pozo. I live at 415 Becker Drive. Um, this is more of a comment. I don't really need a response. 
But I wanted to say as to the second grade cost size of Ross, while I understand it's under your policy limit, Ross is also the school for special needs. Um, you've instituted a new literacy curriculum, which I applaud, I think it's fantastic. But these students are going from having to read the same story and answering questions about the same story to doing cold reads in second grade. That is difficult. It's a difficult transition. I have a fourth grader who, um, you know, did that on his theme tests, you know, monthly, whatever they were. And, and the grades were always lower. He's a very good student, A's and B's all the time. And the grades on the theme test were a C. So I would think in the future that you may want to consider the implications of increasing class size, changing the curriculum, and having the special needs students in the class all at the same time. I'm not saying it shouldn't be 25, but there's a lot of factors this year that maybe <laughs> the more prudent thing would have been to have an extra class or hire some aides to help. Good point, thank you. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, meeting adjourned.